Now, on to other business. Treasurer Jim Chalmers, or should we call him Chairman Chalmers, and his attempt to remake the economy and lead us all into the sunlit uplands of corporatized socialism, where big business, big bureaucrats, and big union bosses all join hands, sing kumbaya, and divide the spoils of the economy between them in the name of values. Well, Chalmers' plan is hitting some snags, and I think it is safe to say there are probably some in the business community that are now experiencing a few pangs of buyer's remorse when it comes to backing in Albo. Remember that in the run-up to last year's election, it was no secret that the nation's C-suites were, at least quietly, hoping in many cases for the end of Scott Morrison and big gains to be made by the Teals and Labor. Now, though, as Anthony Albanese reveals himself as a Whitlam in Hawks clothing, businesses are starting to have second thoughts. I was intrigued to read today that two of the nation's biggest business groups, the Business Council of Australia and the Australian Industry Group, have come out and told the government to hit the brakes on their plans to reinvent capitalism. Check out this report in The Australian today. The BCA is Jennifer Westacott, who represents major employers including the big four banks, telcos, West Farmers, BHP, and Qantas, said the market-based system had led to household wealth growing more than ninefold from $1.5 trillion in 1992 to more than $14 trillion. Quote, Ms. Westcott said, we know it works. Everyone agrees that Australians should have access to good jobs, higher wages, better living standards, and the best opportunities in the world. But, she said, that isn't about rewriting the system. What the system does need, she said, is constant attention to keep change with rapid pace, and we've dropped the ball on that kind of economic reform. That's why, she said, many Australians feel like they can't get ahead. That's actually what she said, an echo of what we talked about right here on the program last night. When we looked at that decade from, uh, you know, the end of the GFC to COVID, far from being a decade of stagnation, Australia, such as Australia's, went great guns until the pandemic. Now, the AIG's Innes Willox also warned against this new move by Chalmers to rewrite the rules of capitalism. Mr. Willox warned against, quote, sleepwalking into becoming a quasi-command economy, which he said would be disastrous for the country. Quote, there is always an important need for government and the private sector to work together in the national interest or where there are clear common goals or needs. There needs to be clear understandings on how that would work, including a clear understanding, he said, that the, gov the private sector is not simply an arm of government. All correct, but this bit he said here was particularly fascinating to me. Willix added that the market-based economy had served Australia well over four decades, urged against what he called, quote, vague and populist disparaging of neoliberalism. Indeed. Now, this is all, frankly, I think, kind of hilarious, and it's definitely ironic because, you know, the thing is about Labour, Chalmers, Anthony Albanese, the whole lot of them claim to be absolutely against, and they decry at every term anything they think smacks of populism when it threatens the left electorally. Just think about how every time a conservative leader looks like he is going to win an election anywhere in the world, we are told that it is a grave threat to democracy, populism. Yet, when it comes to the economy, the likes of Chalmers and Albanese can make vague declarations like, oh, it's not working for people, and then go on and plan to dismantle 30 or 40 years of economic reform that has made this country, up until now at least, the envy of much of the world. Now, on, as many on this network have warned, chaos in the energy markets brought about by price caps and pushback from producers who feel that, on the one hand, they are being chased out of the country for their sins against the climate, and on the other, asked to keep the lights on for less money, is just the beginning. Reports Ewan Hannon at The Australian, companies across the paper, manufacturing, printing, and rail sectors, all could be subject 
to multi-employer claims as the influential Australian Manufacturers Workers Union looks to use Labor's new industrial relations laws to improve pay and conditions of members. What does this mean? Well, for some, it might mean higher wages, which is great, but it also means that big business can absorb those wages and pass them on to consumers, and those outfits will be much better off while small businesses, the ones whose lobby group COSBOA foolishly signed up to this deal at last year's job summit, are left holding the can. And then, of course, there is the problem with inflation, which, as in the United States, we are told isn't really happening. OK, fine, but, you know, my local supermarket wanted $4.70 the other day for a tin of the good tuna. But who knows, must have been a figment of my imagination.